Hi everyone, I'm Gina from Gina K Designs and your host of Stamp TV. Today on Stamp TV I'm going to show you a fun holiday card project and a really fun new technique. Let me show you the tools and products you need to make this card project. First you're going to need some ink and the ink that I'm using is the Gina K Designs Premium Pigment Ink in Ivory. I'm also going to use some of our black onyx dye ink. I'm going to use some of the Memento Tuxedo Black ink. Then I have some markers here. For markers, I'm going to use Copic R27, that's the cadmium red. This happens to be a sketch pen. I have another sketch pen here, E40 Brick White. And then I have a couple, ch couple chow markers. I have YR04, which is chrome orange, and RV10, which is pale pink. And the difference between these two markers is really about the barrel and the cap. The sketch are oval, the chow are round. The sketch hold a little bit more ink than the chow. And the chow are less expensive than the sketch. But they all work together, the tips are all the same, both are refillable, both can have tip replacement, so they're both great markers. Okay, so for glitter, I'm going to use the prismatic glitter, the Gina K prismatic glitter in frozen and in red hot. Along with that, I'll be using a quickie glue pen to add that glitter. For dyes, I have a couple different dyes here. I have the, these are all Cherry Lynn dyes. I have the Silver Stacker circles, I have the purple circles, and then I have the inverted circles. So I'll be using those three circles. I'm also going to use one of the Gina K Designs dies. This is the one that coordinates with the Magic of Christmas set. I'm sorry, the Christmas Magic set. And that's this stamp set. So I'm going to be cutting out the little snowman from Christmas Magic. I'm also going to use the Christmas Magic set and the Home for the Holidays set. Both of these stamp sets and the dies come in the Home for the Holidays stamp TV kit. Then I'm going to be using some of the foam squares, also some adhesive, and then for cardstock I have some of our heavy base weight ivory for my card base, some of the charcoal brown, some turquoise sea, and then I have a few pieces of layering ivory. Now for my technique today that I want to show you, this fun technique, I want to show you guys how to create the look of stitched hills and stitched borders. So I have a couple fun tools that you may already have in your collection. The first thing I have is a cutting mat, and a lot of you may have a Stampin' Up! cutting mat or a Fiskars cutting mat. This happens to be by Dritz. Um, I also do some sewing and quilting on the side, so this happens to be um, a product that I really like for small pieces and cutting small pieces. I'm also going to use a rotary cutter, and I have a Fiskars rotary cutter. I not only use this for fabric, but I use it to cut my deco foil. It allows me to cut very even pieces so there's no waste, and it's also a great way to cut cardstock, so there's a lot you can do with one of these cutting wheels. I also have a tracing wheel, and a lot of you probably have one of these in your sewing box tucked away in the basement. This one has nice deep grooves. It's a fun product to use for um, transferring lines onto fabric to take in darts and things like that. But for crafting, it makes really cool stitched lines. All right. And then I have, and I admit, I went to Joann's and bought this with my 40% off coupon. This is an Omni Arc. This is by OmniGrid, and it's a quilter's arc. So this allows you to create circles for quilting. You fold your, um, your fat quarter into in half and half again, and then you cut around, and it makes a big circle so that you can quilt circles. But it's also really cool for cutting paper and cutting paper on curves. So I'm going to use that today. And I think, you know, between the straight edges and the different arcs, this is an amazing tool. And it was not expensive at all, especially after using the coupon. And then the other thing that I need for this little technique is my embossing mat. This is my Spellbinders embossing mat. When you buy the embossing mats, they come in a pack of two. So I keep one for embossing, and then I've been using this one for this technique. If you only have one embossing mat, as long as you use just one side, you can, might see some very tiny little 
marks in it, but it really won't affect your embossing at all. So I'm going to use that today. So let me show you this fun technique. What I did was I cut three pieces of cardstock down to match my piece of turquoise C. They're all the same size there. And then what I'm going to do is take one of those and put a little bit of adhesive on the back and then stick that down onto my mat. You can put it anywhere on the mat. And then I'm going to use the largest arc. So I'm going to start by just lining that up like that. And then I'm going to use my rotary cutter and I'm going to cut this just by holding this down in place and slipping my blade into the groove and cutting. Now if you don't have one of these cutters, you might have an X-Acto knife or one of the Fiskars finger knives, you can use that. That's, that'll work too. So that's one. Then I'm going to do the other side. I'm going to make that one a little bit steeper. Cut. I'll make that, that's a little too steep. There we go. And you can change the arcs that you use too. You don't have to use the same one all the time. You can have some really steep hills. So let's see, did that cut all the way through? Yep. All right. So I'm going to put that one aside. And then I'm going to grab one more piece of cardstock. And this one, get a little adhesive on the back. This one, I'm going to cut more like this. And I want to lay these down here and see how these look. So let's move that up a bit. Kind of doing a little layout on the fly here. And then this one will go over here. Okay, that'll work. So now I have this one in place. And I'm going to cut that last one just like that. Okay, now I'm going to take these three pieces and I'm going to grab my Spellbinders mat. So the first one I'm going to add a little tape on the back and put that on my mat and I'm going to replace that arc right there and I'm going to add some stitched lines. I'm just going to run this tracing tool right along the edge like that. And you can see, I'll show you all this up close as soon as I'm done here. So that's one. I'm going to do the next one. Same way. There we go. There's another one. And I'm going to do my last one here. Let's get that in position. like that and add a little stitching like that. So there I've added some stitched little hills which I can combine together to make a cute little snowy scene and I'll show you how that looks up close. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit because I want to show you just how easy this tool is to work. So if you have a piece of cardstock and you want to do kind of a fancy edge, you can take this tracing wheel, as long as it's taped down, you can take this and you can do all kinds of little fun curved edges. like that. So you can have fun little 
frames going around your project. You can also add this to the score buddy. Let me just back out a hair here so I'm not too close. Okay. So you can add this to the score buddy and you can create some really cool patterns. So I'm going to do this one on every half inch and then I'm going to do it on every half inch the other way. Okay, so now you can see I've got all those score lines. I don't know if you can see those or not. It's kind of bright. But now you can do the same thing. You can add stitched lines in there on just by getting that tool right into one of the grids. Just get it in there and then you can add a stitched line on the quarter inch marks. You can also create fun little tickets where maybe you have a ticket. This is redeemable for one hug whenever you need it, and then do a little perforated line so that they can, they can tear it off and give you the ticket when they want to redeem their hug. So that's kind of a fun way to create. Actually kind of looks like Argyle when it's all done if you do it in both directions. Isn't that fun? There we go. So that is, you have the striped line, the embossed line, and then you have the stitched line. And you can use either side. So all that from a little tracing wheel. Pretty little snow hills, fun little borders around the edges of your card, little twisty borders. And if you don't want them to be twisty, you can just butt it up to any line and you can do a nice straight line stitched border like that. So there's all kinds of fun ways that you can use this. You just got to get it into the groove and like that. Okay, so now let's get to our card project. Now that we have our little snow hills, Zoom in so you can see these snow hills again. Let's see how cute they are. All stitched. Those are so fun. All right, so now on to our car card project. So now I'm going to grab a scrap piece of paper here and I'm going to stamp some of the snowflakes from the Home for the Holidays kit and I'm going to stamp those in ivory pigment ink. So I have some of the ivory pigment ink here. I'll start with the big one and I'll stamp a bunch of big snowflakes. This is a nice subtle ink. It's the same color as our ivory cardstock, which I love because our white is really white. And this just gives a little bit more of a subtle look. Okay, so there's some ivory snowflakes. And then I'm going to add the small snowflake. And kind of disperse that in and around those bigger ones. Like that. Okay. So now my next step is going to be to stamp the little snowman from the Christmas Magic stamp set. And you could do this card with any of these little guys, the little Santa or the little fairy. I'm going to stamp that one using some of the Memento Tuxedo black ink because I'm going to color with Copics. There we go. Oh, let me stamp them again. I missed his little glove. Just flip it over. There's two sides to every cardstock, right? There we 
we go. See, if I had been thinking, I would have my Misty here, and that wouldn't have happened. All right. I'm also going to stamp the greeting. And the one I'm going to use is May Your Days Be Merry and Bright. I'm going to stamp this one using the Gina K Black Onyx ink. You can use the VersaFine, too. Any of that will work great for this greeting. Let's stamp that right here. Okay. And then... Put that all aside. We're going to do a little bit of quick coloring on this little guy. And I'm not going to worry about that because that little spot is going to get cut off with the dye. Okay, so I'm going to begin with my red marker here, the RV27. And I'm going to color his little hat. I like this snowman's hat because it can also be a birthday party kind of look, which is really fun for winter birthdays. You can color it in different colors. But we know it's Christmas, or at least it's a Christmas card, so this one's going to be all red and white. You can do his shoes too. And some of you might have the Spectrum Noir markers, or you might have Tombos or Zigs. You can use any kind of marker. You don't have to use Copics for this. I just happened to grab them because they've been sitting out on my workspace. Okay. Then I'm going to add a little bit of the brick white. Just do a little bit of shading on his face here. A little shading under there and under his chin just to add a little bit of color. Okay. And then I'm going to color his nose with the chrome orange. And then I want to give his cheeks a little pink, so I'm going to use that pale pink. So he's happy. He's happy because there is a snowstorm. All right, here's the snowstorm. So while I'm letting that dry for a second, not that it has to dry much, um, I am going to add my little snow hills here. So my first one, I think I want this to go pretty high. So I'll put one there one here and then this last one right over here. So that'll be my layout for my snow hills. So let's get those tacked down with a little bit of adhesive. That one there, maybe just a hair higher. Okay, and then this one will go next. Right there. And then my last one will fill in that little spot. We'll go right here. So there's my little snow hills. And then this whole panel is going to go on to my charcoal brown piece. And then this whole panel goes on to my ivory card base. So 
So there we go. Now my next step is going to be to cut out the snowman and the greeting. And I'm going to do, do that with my cuddle bug. You can use any die cutting machine with these dies. I also really like the little sister machine by Cherry Lynn Designs. It's a great machine. I'm going to cut this one out first. And you can do a couple things at once with these. Let's see if this fits. I could have stamped this a little better, but that'll work. Okay. So I'm going to cut both of those circles out on the ivory. There's the greeting, and there's my bigger circle. Put those aside. Now I'm going to cut out a piece of the, the uh, charcoal brown using the inverted circle. And this is the technique that I like to use that gives me that little beaded edge. There it is. Flew right out of the die. <laughs> Put that aside. And then I'm going to cut out this little guy using the coordinating die that comes in the kit. Make sure that that's in a good spot. Looks pretty good. Now if you're, if you're not comfortable with laying the plate on top, you can always put a little bit of washi tape or painter's tape on the die to tack it down to the outside edge and that will hold everything in place. And there we go. There's our little guy. Isn't he so cute? I love him. Now I'm going to add a little glitter to him. So I'm going to grab a little piece of scrap paper here. Just a piece of copy paper folded in half. And I'm going to start by using a little of the quickie glue pen. I'm going to do the red areas first, I think, on this. So, sometimes you have to start your quickie glue pen on a piece of cardstock, so just use a little scrap and just bounce on it a little bit, and then it'll start to flow. So I'm just going to color all those little red areas. And the reason why I colored it red first is because if this isn't completely covered with glitter, that'll be okay, because the red will be showing through from behind. So if you miss any little spots, you really won't see it. You're just adding a lot of sparkle over that red that's already there. So I just colored my red areas, and now I'm going to pour some of this red glitter right on top of them. Ooh, that's a lot of glitter. And let me blow away the excess there. And if there's any areas that it's not coming off, just use a little paintbrush, a little dry paintbrush to get the rest off. <sighs> okay. There we go. And then I'm going to put the glitter back into my container. And even though most of that glitter is gone, I'm going to fold the paper over and use the other side just so I don't transfer any glitter one color to the next. Let me grab my little snowman guy again. And now, I'm going to add some more quickie glue into the other areas and put the frozen glitter in there. So that's more like a crystal iridescent clear kind of glitter. I don't know what that was. A little die cut piece. And there you can see you have more than one color glitter. If 
you got a little bit of that iridescent in there, you can brush it off. <laughs> there we go. Okay. And then if you wanted to do his buttons too, you could do his buttons and add a little glitter there. So let's put this glitter back in the jar. And now it's time to assemble this card. So now I have this nice little snowy scene. And I'm going to grab my three circles and mount those together using some of the adhesive. So that's going to go right here. And then this one will go on top. Like that. And there's the little beaded edge that I love. And I'm going to adhere that directly onto my card base, almost like it's the sun or the moon. There we go. And then this little guy, I'm going to put a couple foam squares on him on the back. So we'll pop him up. And then he is going to go right about there. He's going to stand right in the middle of all those snow mountains. And there is my finished card project. Still going to brush away a little bit of the glitter. Glitter gets everywhere, huh? Okay. So there we go. There is my finished card project. I hope you've enjoyed today's Stamp TV project and technique. Stay tuned to Stamp TV for more Stamp TV projects featuring the new Home for the Holidays Stamp TV kit. And thanks so much for watching.